Minister, small-scale fishers operate, operate on very tight margins. The ongoing rise in fuel costs over the last few years has impacted these boats significantly. Other countries like France and Spain have supported small-scale fishers with high fuel costs through the European Maritime Fisheries and Aquaculture Fund. Will the Minister introduce a similar scheme to assist small-scale fishers with fuel costs? Minister. Uh, thanks, uh, Deputy Karen. So I continue to be particularly aware of the, the challenges being faced by, by the seafood sector and by, by, by fishing families, and particularly the challenge that we've had over the last um, couple of years around the increased costs of marine fuel. As I previously stated in, in a response um, to, to this issue, I, I met with the industry's representatives groups a number of times to discuss this, as well as other matters. And I also reported as well on the development of the support schemes in line with the recommendations of the Seafood Task Force, which I established uh, and which was um, uh, um, the members of that were primarily members of the fishing, uh, of the fishing organisations, um, and which we stepped through a number of schemes uh, coming out of that, uh, totalling an overall contribution of €305 million Euro, um, to, to the fishing sector across many schemes, including importantly for the inshore sector as well, um, both last year and, and, the, and the year before too. I now shortly, and we're finalising the, uh, next, uh, the Euro next European Maritime Fisheries and Aquaculture Fund, um, which will see €258 million Euro, uh, spent over the next number of years for a number of programmes and schemes which will, be, which will support the sector. In relation to fuel in particular, Deputy Cairns, uh, marine gas oil is unlike most other fuels in that there isn't any revenue on it at all, uh, other than VAT, which can be reclaimed. Um, so it's, it's different from home heating oil or from uh, car uh, or, or indeed uh, farm fuel as well, in that there's no, uh, there's no uh, revenue uh, charged by the state on it, other than VAT, which can be reclaimed. That obviously can be more of an issue for smaller fishers because they may not be reg registered for VAT, and I, and, and, and I do accept that point. Um, however, um, part of the, uh, particularly for the whitefish fleet, the tie-up scheme I put in place, so the second tie-up scheme, was with the objective of supporting the fuel pressures that were there in particular. And um, we have some, seen some easing, although it is high by historic standards. But if you look at um, prior to the invasion of Ukraine, uh, marine gas oil had reached 62 cents a litre on the, what is the, the, the benchmark, um, uh, international benchmark for uh, the Rotterdam Index, which is used to assess that. Um, it then went as high as €1.11 um, um, uh, over the last couple of years, uh, during particular times during the war. Um, it is now back to around um, 61 cents. It's, uh, as of today, it is um, 60, I'd like to say, um, Six, it's about 67 cents a litre now, I think, Deputy Cairns, um, on, that, on that index. Um, it's a couple of cents higher than what it would have been um, the week before the invasion. So it, it, the prices are, have been higher. It is putting pressure on. But I think the key point here is that uh, from a state point of view, we don't actually apply any revenue on it. Um, so uh, you're otherwise, other than that, you're getting into a subsidy situation, which is obviously brings... Uh, very significant considerations of its own account where you're actually subsidising fuel as opposed to removing the revenue the state might charge, which we don't. Um, Minister, you mentioned that support has been made available by government to fleets through the form of tax rebates, but like you said, it isn't accessible to smaller boats who aren't operating on big enough margins to register for VAT. So that's a support that's only in place for the larger players. Small boats genuine, generally operate using petrol engines as opposed to diesel, and there are no supports available to those fishers. So you say you accept that, but what's your response to that? Rising fuel costs over the last few years have eaten into the marginal profits of small-scale fishers, and if it's not addressed, it will drive inshore fishers out of the business. Uh, in 2022, the European Commission activated crisis measures under the European Maritime Fisheries and Aquaculture Fund to support the sector in response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Other EU countries, like I said, like France, are using that fund to support these small-scale fishers using petrol engines, and I'm asking you to do the same. The sector has been crying out for these supports for years now. Um, can the Minister outline how much European funding to the fisheries and marine remains at unallocated? We will, uh, we're certainly using it all up, um, Deputy Karen, so we won't be leaving any, any of it behind. 
Um, I, I don't have that. I don't have that. I don't, I don't know offhand, but I, I can certainly ask my team to, to revert to you on that particular point. But it's certainly all going to be used. And as I say, now in the next few weeks, I'll be announcing about 258 million euro of different schemes that will come over the next few years um, to support the sector, and that particularly the, the inshore sector as well. Um, so I, the price there on the 12th of February for marine gas oil would have been 64 cents a litre. Um, it was uh, just before the invasion of Ukraine, back two years ago, um, it was uh, 62 cents a litre. So it's back to the levels it would have been before the invasion of Ukraine. I'll bet they were a bit higher than what they would normally have been. Um, but listen, as I say, we don't apply any revenue. So already in relation to the fishery sector, there's no revenue um, other than VAT, um, which, which for, for most fishers is reclaimable. Um, what you're proposing, obviously, is that we actually subsidise and we pay for, for fuel. Um, and that we give it, and not only do we not charge tax on it, but we actually pay uh, towards the cost of that fuel. And that's a different space to be getting into altogether. And that opens up a whole set of new considerations. It opens up a set where, for example, once you start paying and subsidising something, um, at, w at what point does that get withdrawn? Does that then lead to people, um, uh, you know, on economical fishing as well, and, and lead to a, a situation that becomes less sustainable in the long term? But listen, I mean, I'm, uh, you're free to pr 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 put forward a specific proposal in this regard, but it certainly would be an entirely different space Minister. for the state to go into where they're actually subsidising fuel. But you're open, it's, I'm open to hearing what proposal you would come forward with as to how that would work and what the implications would be into the future as well. Minister, the reality is that it just isn't good enough that the larger boats are being supported by government in so many ways and inshore fishers just tend to be ignored in that regard. They pay a higher cost for fuel in the first place. Fuel costs are, um, in bigger ports are lower due to the demand and the supply for bigger vessels and small boats operating from small piers and harbours obviously just have to buy it at, at local petrol stations at much higher costs. Um, and the small scale fleet, I think crucially, the important thing here is that it accounts for the vast majority, over half of employment in the sector. Um, so they can't continue to just be excluded from all the schemes, the fuel supports in areas, all of these things are designed for the bigger players. So I think, you know, of course the department can look at ways to support the inshore fishers, the smaller boats in the sector as well. It doesn't have to be a, this is entering into new territory, how could we possibly look at it? Generally, the way the schemes are designed, the smaller players are excluded, and this is a, a, a kind of a continuing trend. Um, and the disregard for those vessels under eight metres in, in West Cork and other areas, it just, something has to be done. Um, as you know, salaries are low for small scale fishers and they can't drop further. So other countries have introduced fuel supports for those smaller boats. I'm asking you to look at doing the same. So listen again, Deputy, uh, Deputy um, um, Cairns, you're welcome to put forward a policy yourself in relation to this as to what it would look, look like. What I would say to you is that what you'd be doing is you'd actually be paying uh, and subsidising the cost of buying fuel because the state doesn't apply any revenue. So if you wish to put forward, because your party doesn't have any policy in regard to this at the moment, but should you wish to develop a policy, I'll certainly look at it and see what it is you're proposing. Um, the state doesn't apply revenue uh, at all, except for VAT. VAT is reclaimable by, by, by many fisher, fishers, but not all, because, but as you know, VAT is a European, it's a common market. We, you, uh, what it's applied to and what it's not applied to is standard and uniform right across the European Union. So we can't adjust that part. But we have no revenue whatsoever in relation to, and, in relation to marine gas oil. We're also opposing any moves at international level, which there's a number, to actually apply and insist that there would be revenue in marine gas oil under the World Trade Organization negotiations at the moment, there's a push for that. For example, I'm resisting that because I don't want to see any revenue applied on it because it's already, it's important to the profit, uh, profit lines of fishers. But should your party and should you wish to develop a policy in this, we could all consider it. But as I say, you would be going into the space of not only not applying revenue and a tax on fuel, but you'd actually be paying people and subsidizing for the buying of fuel. Right.